Now, one of the reasons for the Bruins. Here we go again. Oh, Lindros now involved with Tim Taylor. And Lindros is hammering away with the rights. And Kevin Collins decides to jump in to save Tim Taylor. Oh, Lindros had the right hand free and was wailing away. A couple of Bruins wanted it. Lindros, they were held off, but then the linesman jumped in. Now Rob DeMaio, and I believe it's Peter Svoboda, are beginning to look as though they could go. They've dropped their gloves. This one has gotten nasty in a hurry. Taylor wondering what the heck happened there. Why Lindros going after me? And the bench now is giving Lindros the business, the Boston Bruin bench. Now Lindros is going off to the locker room. It's possible the instigation penalty was given here. Because play was going on, so it's not as though, as was the case with Elliott and Otto, it's an automatic misconduct. But we'll have to wait and see what Steve Walkham has decided. Now when I said leave a message, that's not really what I had in mind. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Tim Taylor did get a message there, though, loud and clear as he was getting pummeled. I just focus on Lindros now as Taylor goes behind the net, and Lindros immediately went at him. He, Taylor gave him the stick, and then away they go. Yeah, instigation on Lindros. He gets 2, 5, and 10. But you can see what Lindros is upset about. He thought that he had been high stick right there. Just saw the tail end of it there. And Eric wasn't about to discuss the matter. He just went to wailing away. And his gloves were down first, so he gets the instigation. To the Flyers, Eric Lindros. A five-minute major fighting to the Bruins, Tim Taylor. Time of the penalties, five Just the five minutes for fighting on Taylor's. the slot. Got it further toward the slot. Tipped away, but back to McGillis, who keeps it in. Makes the move. McGillis, where the hell goes? The shot. right there tells it all the way the Flyers have to play and that's the second time in the game that the Flyers have got the second shot oh what a play McGillis makes to keep it alive get the shot and then Lindros that was outstanding play by Lindros he's got Jitnik all over him look at this Lindros getting position Jitnik's all over him and as he's falling able to hit the far corner Outstanding effort. That is just a great effort by Lindros. The kind of efforts, of course, the Flyers have to have. The first goal here is so vital in this one. Absolutely. But look at McGillis, the weaving he does to get the initial shot, and Lindros follows it up with Dominic Hasek out of position. With it, Babbage waiting to bring to more. Bring to more. Shot! And that one took off. Hasek then knocked down. Gregson shakes his head no. And now we have Lindros tangled up with Wilson, and they're going to go. Lindros and Wilson angling in the corner. Two big guys right here. Wilson to right. Not sure that connected. The crowd certainly thought it did. Missed with that one. Oh, Lindros caught him with the right. And Wilson has to go into the turtle. Well, Wilson went after Lindros because he, Lindros had made contact with Dominic Hoshik. Well, the frustration is obviously there, although, as you said, this time the fight initiated by Buffalo. On the shot by Brindamore, Lindros to the uh, shoulder, and that's when Wilson comes in. Now, Lindros could have gave it to him right here. He was down. He stopped. And then uh, Wilson comes back, and away they go. Couple rights by Wilson early, and then he tried a big roundhouse. He missed, and look out. When you miss with one of those roundhouses, you're leaving yourself wide open. Wide open, and Lindros was there with the right. And while this was though, and now it's Anna To Kirkisney, a shot, bad save. Rebound in front, Lindros, shot, score! Eric Lindros gets his first of the year. Flyers lead it 1-0. Luck is back with the line, and he made things happen in the offensive zone that resulted in a goal. And look at the fans. They appreciate the opening goal by the home team. And number 88 gets the Flyers going here 
against the Ducks. Lindros actually made quite a, a good play here using the skate. Watch again. See, it's in his feet, off the skate, onto the forehand, and releasing it. It wasn't a hard shot, but if you notice, a bear did not really have good position. He was not in a stationary position or square to the shooter, and so Lindros gets things going. Dimitri Tertisny should be. You know, when you play a skating game, an aggressive game, you just, especially the hitting, you wear down the opposition. And, Lindros not only has scored goals, but he's thrown his weight around, has had a lot of other flyers. And you can't tell me that the Anaheim Ducks aren't aware of the presence of the different guys on the ice that do the hitting. Keeps it in. Pulls it around. Claire hops to the puck in the corner. Tipped it to Manilak to Lindros. Shot, he scores! Oh, this line working very well right there. Each player touching the puck, and then it's in the net off the stick of Lindros. 4-1. Uh, what made the play happen is John LeClaire beating Olsen in the corner for the puck. You know, the Flyers are really darting for loose pucks. And you're going to see it right here. See, here's John LeClaire just winning the battle in the corner and just a chip shot to Maniluk, who gets it on the backhand to Lindros. You know, if he had turned around to his forehand, the play would have been over. Well, Lindros didn't waste any time unloading it. So a two-goal night for Eric Lindros. Cross ice to Brindamore. Brindamore gains the line, turns the puck to Lindros, the shot, he scores! Oh, laser from Lindros! Power play goal, 2-0 Flyers. Lindros had said that this year he's going to shoot the puck a lot more. Well, he only had three shots in the game against Anaheim, scored two goals, and here gets the Flyers' second goal of the night, a power play goal, his third of the year to lead the team. But watch Lindros as he throws the puck up the wing. Now, as they game the zone, now stop it right here. Here's the scrum. Two guys converge on Rod Brindamore. The pass is going to go to Lindros. He's left in the clear. Hey, you can't leave Lindros in the clear from the top of the circle. Just fires the puck on the stick side past Pupa. So Rod Brindamore drew a crowd that left Lindros open for his goal. He'll gain the line, push it ahead to Lindros. Lindros leaned on it, taken to the boards by Manderville, got his stick up. Knocked Lindros' helmet off, but that's allowed. Here's McGillis, the shot, deflection, score! Lindros gets back up, cuts to the slot, deflects the puck home. What a play by Lindros after getting roughed up in the corner. It is tied at one. And Manderville is a big customer, over 6'3", 220 pounds. He really threw a good check into Lindros. Lindros stayed with it. The helmet came off. And then what do you do? Well, you get involved in the action in front of the net. And again, it's McGillis that supplies the shot. Now here's the here's the good takeout. I just stop it right there. See, there's a takeout. He continues to fight for the puck and just nudges it free. All right, let it roll. Now, when this is happening, now let's go for the front of the net. The shot is low. Actually, that was off the ice, maybe a foot. The deflection was there. We got a tie game. By Philadelphia. Brindamore works free with the puck. Brindamore to Lindros. The shot he scores. The combination of two and a half with dominating minutes by the Flyers, and they lead it 3-1 on the goal by Lindros. Well, when the Flyers set their mind to it and work the wall, work the cycle, there isn't a team that's the better at doing that. And talk about determination. Like the last two shifts, San Jose could not get the puck out of their own zone. And Lindros' shot was stopped by Vernon, but it had enough to get over the line. But look at the work along the wall. First Brindamore, then LeClaire, then Lindros. But finally on this pass out, it was a quick shot by Lindros. His goals, four of the five goals, have been the result of getting a quick release. Now Lindros was beside Stern. He moved away from him. Stern didn't move with him. And that allowed Lindros time to release that shot. Oh, he picks up his fifth goal of the year. Sharks now looking. Once they get a two goal lead, they really go into this smothering defensive style. Myers trying to get around that. It goes in front. Lindros, a punky scores! Lindros jumped on the loose puck. And now it is a one goal game. Three to two. Well, I don't know how Lindros ever got his stick on that one. But an uh, outstanding play by Rod Brindamore and John LeClaire to keep that puck alive. Number 88 gets himself his sixth goal of the year. They're right in the corner. 
A little flip out, and Brodeur actually used the goal stick to try to deflect it past Lindros. And when he did, he opened up the five hole, and that's where that deflection went by Lindros. So a one goal lead with plenty of time left. Five game goal streak for Eric Lindros. His goal here in the third comes on the first chance of the period for Philadelphia. 6.54 remaining. Let's get to the puck. They have a three on two. Tarion with the puck. Tarion checked through it to the middle. Lindros has it. Lindros the shot. He scores! Short-handed goal for Eric Lindros. And it's not over yet. Three to one the score with 9.21 remaining. Now one of the few mistakes that the Ottawa Senators made, and it happened when they had the power play and we were hailing praises at the power play unit. They give up a short-handed goal. Chris Terrian got nailed against the boards, but the puck came loose. First of all, he'll, he'll pick it up. Now here's the play you make. Coming across York and then Lindros. And number three, Travers. Kind of gave it away, put it right on the stick of Lindros, and Lindros was home free, and he made no mistake. He went high glove side. So 9.21 left. Only a two-goal game. First shorthanded goal of the year for the Flyers. Eric Lindros has scored a goal in seven of his last eight games. The crowd here doesn't like the fact that he scored, but he answered their boos by a lot. The head not out. Richardson, though, is able to play that Lindros. Richardson, though, is able to play that Lindros, avoiding the check attempt by Redden. And Dackel will feel the wrath of Lindros. Oh, and Lindros hammered Dackel into the boards, and Dackel has not gotten up. That's the hardest hit I've ever seen. Oh, boy, he's cut badly. The arm did not go up from Richard Trache immediately. Just absolutely overpower Dackel. Watch just finishing a check oh. using the shoulder. And boy, Dackel was in a very vulnerable position. And right now the Ottawa Senators are pleading for a penalty. That one looked and sounded like a heavy hit because it was. Dackel only 5'11". He felt the brunt of Eric Lindros right there. We'll be back. The doctor has been escorted out to the ice. Dackel is still in that corner. You know, the, uh, the factor is that Dackel is 5'11", Lindros is 6'7", on skates. You know, and, and so you know that he's going to tower above his opponent. But it all started at the blue line when Kravchuk tried to, or Redden rather, tried to hit him with a low hit, a hip check against the knees. Watch this. And Lindros just escapes that, and, and right now, he is hot. And so he is out for bear and, and finishes the check. And Dackel never had a chance. Dackel was slightly slumped, and the, the height disadvantage coupled with the, the fact that he was a little hunched over, and that meant his head is all that separates Lindros from the glass right there. That is a punishing check. The stick was down, the elbow was down. Unfortunately for Dackel, so was his head. Uh, he had no chance in this play. He just had moved the puck up the wall. And coaches always say to a forward, you, you finish your check. And did he ever? So the, the cut was there. And, I, and I'll tell you, that is the most punishing check that I've seen in 25 years of hockey. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you're worried about the cut. But obviously, the concern also. Analog trying to wrestle him off the disc. Analog has the puck. Bounce free. Got it back to the point. Shot! Save road free by the score! Of the third, it's three to two. Well, if you're going to make a comeback, boy, why not start in the first minute of the period? And boy, Manilak did some great work behind the net. He refused to be knocked down, and, and the shot from the point got through, and the Flyers pounced on the rebound. So look at the work Manilak makes to get it to the point. And there's Lindros with his stick. He, I think, he deflected into Rhodes and then picked up his own rebound. Maybe we can isolate a little bit. And boy, he just got away from his check, and it's a one-goal game. That's just good work. Manaluk, and the shot got through, and Lindros following it up by stuffing it in the net. Lindros' eighth goal of the year, and was into a top. 
Thatcher from Rosa. Checked by Leclerc. His pass just got through Manila. Manila can will rank it. Manila centers it. Leclerc backhander wide. Leclerc to Lindros. Tries to stop it home, but he does. He scores. This line continues to hum. 2 0 Philadelphia. Pass, pass, goal. I mean, very quick. There's no hesitation. Reading the play, reacting to it. And Lindros has his ninth goal of the year. But what a play by not only Maniluk, but also John LeClaire. Now watch how everybody is just to the side. Morozov just reacted very slowly to getting to Lindros, and he tucked it in very quickly. Now, here's the play. Stop it right there. John LeClaire, he sees Lindros to the side, and in one motion from the, on his backhand, just moves the puck out in front. Two points. He's now tied with Yarmir Yager for points leadership. Uh, he has certainly been on a roll, Eric Lindros. He's had a shot in every single game, and that makes eight uh, games out of 12 that he has scored at least one goal. We'll step aside, be back with more of the first period after this. The type of hockey that the players want from him. Desjardins to Lindros. Lindros charging in. Lindros the shot, he scores! He fanned it. A changeup beats Broder. Flyers lead it 3-1. Now that's one of those bad goals that you were talking about that Brodeur has been giving up. And you got a happy, happy group of Flyer fans as they see one of the game's best let in a soft one. But there's another example of why you keep shooting that puck at the net. But what a burst of speed by Lindros. He uses the skate to bump it up and then just lets it go. It didn't have a lot on it. And uh, Brodeur just overreacted, had his stick off the ice, and went right through the five hole. So the Flyers come out charging in this third period and have grabbed a two goal lead. Duke pushes it out to Lindros. Lindros crisscrossing with Jones. Lindros holding on. They give him all kinds of room. He'll take it and score! Oh, you can't give Lindros that kind of room. Makes the Devils pay. It's 5-1 Philadelphia. Not only did Lindros have time and a lot of skating room, but boy, he got some help from his wingman, Jones and LeClaire, who went at the net. And any time you go at the net, the defenseman has to go back and kind of converge. So Lindros had plenty of time to unload it. Watch this. There he gains the blue line. See now everybody back off, back off. And there's a slap shot that finds its way into the net. And John LeClaire was tippetoeing around that goal crease. He wanted to make sure he stayed out of there. The referee signified immediately that he was out of the crease. See, John, look at him. <laughs> Eric Lindros with a four-point night. Two. The timeout is there to give the Lindros line a rest before they go to the power play. John McCara is the McDonald's power play payoff contestant. $200 in the jackpot as Roger Nielsen uses the timeout to discuss things with his players. Milan, third minor of the game. McGillis moves into Desjardins, perimeter passing so far. McGillis to Lindros in front. Leclerc, he scores! Tick, tack, tell it's in the net. Power gets to the puck. Sundin wraps him up. Jones gets to it again. Walks out in front. Shots in rebound. Lindros, he scores! Lindros! up the garbage in front and the Flyers lead it three to two. Now this line has scored two goals and the distance has been about two feet. So the cycling pays off. They do. They maintain control of the puck. They don't give it away blind. And eventually leads to a goal. But watch this give and go. And then Lindros all alone. He's on his backhand. He's got a man on him and still has the strength to overpower the check. Let's watch Lindros just hovering and gets a piece of that one. And in it goes. So Stevie Thomas was beside Lindros, but was not able to grab a hold or maintain the stick. And the line has come through again, this time the go-ahead goal. Lindros had gone four straight without a goal. You could sense some relief from him as he... EA Sports presents Cyber Lindros. If it's in the game, it's in the game. NHL 99. A 
sports. It's in the game. Cutting in the shots and rebound. Lindros, he scores! Eric Lindros tucks it in. Power play goal. The Flyers lead it 1-0. Now goal number 13 for Lindros in the power play, and it all started along the wall where a careless play by the Devils allowed the Flyers to maintain control of the puck. And they moved it around, and Lindros finished it off. It starts right there. Now here's the shot. It goes back into the corner. Now look at Jones feed LeClaire again, and it caromed, I believe, off of Danico's skate, went wide of Brodeur. Here's Lindros now. He's going to come to this side. And there's the puck just waiting for him, and Brodeur, no chance on the play. So a good start for Philadelphia. Eric Lindros, player who hesitates, got it back to Desjardins. Now McGillis, the shot blocked off in front. Lindros doing the shot, he scores! Lindros' second power play goal of the night. And just like that, it is a one-goal game again. You know, in the, the power play for the Flyers in the last few weeks, other than the last two games, Lindros really wasn't involved in the shooting of the puck. He had control of it a lot. But you want this guy here to take a lot of the shots because of the way he can shoot it. But as it comes around, watch, just a shot at the net. Lindros is cruising. He's going to get the rebound and just fire it. See, now he's behind the net. He's just circling, circling. All of a sudden, he sees it, makes one move, and fires it. Odeline not able to make the check, and Flyers are with it. Going around it goes, Jones to the puck. Backhands to LeClaire. LeClaire for Lindros, he scores! Wow. Jones to LeClaire to Lindros. We've heard that before. It's tied at one. Well, that was a mismatch behind the net. Dennis Peterson had no shot at John LeClaire. And when you get in there and forecheck, good things are going to happen. And that's been the strength of the Lindros line all year. Uh, just a little dump behind the net. And right from this position, look at how John LeClaire just digs it out. Peterson not even able to do anything to stop him. And then Lindros just moving right in and taking a one-timer. You know it's on the play that Niedermeyer was looking behind the net at the pass coming in front. He never even saw Lindros until it was too late. Fifth with a pass to LeClaire. He falls down, but is still able to get the puck to Lindros. Swerving his way in across the line. Swinging to the left wing. Lindros comes in front. The shot! Did Brewer make the save? No, it's in. They score! Moment of hesitation, but it's in the net. Lindros has his second, and it's 4-1 Philadelphia. I lost sight of the puck. I thought he had made the save. But Lindros with a burst of speed. It all started to fly his zone. John LeClaire, he's falling to the ice. Shovels the puck to Lindros. There he goes. Now watch Lindros go. Away he goes. Cuts towards the net. And in it goes. What a power move by number 88. It and is being reviewed. But doesn't appear as though anybody was Why? in the crease. Mike Condon is upstairs. I don't know why that one is being reviewed because uh, on our replay there wasn't anybody in the crease. But if uh, if that goal stands, that'll be another two-goal game for Lindros back-to-back -to -back tours. Spectacular goal by Lindros. From our angle, it was hard to see the puck go in, but certainly from the, the lower levels you could see it went directly in. And it uh, didn't appear to be a skate in the crease or any kick or anything. I don't know what they could be looking at here, but Terry Gregson remains on the phone with Mike Condit. Now we can see it uh, from the overhead. Oh, that was definitely in the net. You can see the twine bulge. And you can tell by their reaction it is official. And Lindros has his second of the game, 16th of the year. And the Flyers a three-goal lead. Lindros is determined and makes that power move towards the net. There isn't any field rush. Dave Babich drops it for Lindros. He'll blast. Score! Went off the glove of Joseph and in. Lindros got hit after the play by Ty Domi. And the Flyers, led by Luke Richardson and others, go after Domi. It's 2 0 Philadelphia. And the pushing and shoving is beginning. Ty Domi, who, by the way, only has two penalty minutes in his last six games. People are wondering whether he's trying for the Lady Bing or something. Uh, well, he'll get a penalty here, one would imagine. He hit Lindros after the shot. Although Merrill is talking to Lindros like maybe he's explaining Domi's point of view, but we'll wait and see as the players begin to calm down. Well, the main thing is that puck went in the net. 
with 118 left to go in this first period. And again, a, a howitzer by Lindros. Boy, did he get wood on that one. So he has now scored goals in three straight games. And that one just overpowered Joseph. Much again as Babbage just drops it. And from this position, Lindros has a lot of time to use the big slap shot. You know, with Babbage going for the net, everybody goes with him. And Lindros had time and space. Well, that's and way. then there's a little shot afterwards. That's which way late. There should be a penalty on that. And I believe Domi is, is going uh, to the box. No need for that. Puck is already in the net, and, and Domi comes in. But what a shot. You also got the glove on it, but not enough to keep it from going in the net. Dave Babich will get his first regular season point as a flyer with a nice assist on the drive in this game. A pass from Jones to Leclerc. He tipped it out to Lindros. Lindros gets a check along the boards for Hulse. They get their sticks up, and here they go. They've dropped the gloves. It's Lindros and Hulse as they will square off. Lindros with a right. Now Hulse tries to get a right. Lindros another right as these are two big guys trying to tangle. Lindros trying to use that strength is now he got the right free for one. His uppercut missed. Lindros helmet is off. Now Hulse's is off as well as they wrestle. Hulse defensive in this fight for the most part. There's a right in close from Lindros. He's not winding up with those. Oh, that right caught. Lindros now has gotten rid of the elbow pad. He's ready to go to work here. Hulse just trying to hold him off. Now Lindros has his left hand tied up, but he got it free in time to deliver another left. And a right in tight. Another right, and the linesman will break it up. And that one a clear Lindros victory. Now every once in a while, Lindros is going to drop the stick in the gloves and make a statement. I certainly don't want him fighting every game. He's too busy racking up goals and assists, but the crowd certainly in favor of this bout. And clearly won by number 88. Yeah, I think the fans sort of like it. <laughs> They're standing here at the First Union Center to show the captain their appreciation. 5-13 remaining in the period. They are going to send Lindros to the locker room. Which, I'm not sure if they're going to send Hulse as well. They haven't as yet. Well, it happened along the wall with Hulse. They grabbed him, and then they're looking at each other. Gave him a cross check, and that's all it took. Hey, Lindros could have gave it to him right away. He waited for Hulse to drop his stick and glove, and, and then there were some real good ones thrown, but that is so tiring. And you know, your player's hanging on, and you're trying to get away from him. And that, that, that's the struggle there. But he got some good shots well, he in. Flyers penalty. penalty number 88, Eric Lindros, each five minutes for fighting. Well, it is it's the majors. As they went around, and Lindros, yeah, I think he wears guys down with that strength throughout yeah. the fight. He, he gets those punches inside, and most guys, you wouldn't have anything on that punch, but you can see the head flying back from Hulse and a couple of them. They, they were stinging, and that one over the head, over the top, I should say, caught Hulse in the head. And by the end of it, they were both out of gas. Fine by Jones. It bounces up to Lindros. He's got Leclerc with him. Lindros will fake the shot. Tebow's down. Lindros dumps it home. He scores! A dazzling move by Lindros. And the Flyers lead it 1 0. Less than a minute into the game. Well, you've got to have some skills to make a play like that. And the fire bench reacts to that solo effort by Lindros. Watch as he. Makes the move, fakes a slap shot. Tebow goes to the butterfly and then tries to stretch out with a goal stick. Lindros still has the reach to come out in front of the net and just tuck it home. Now it's Tebow, can't reach Lindros with a stick. John LeClaire was well covered on the play, so it, that was the play or no play at all. Wow, 18th goal of the year for Lindros. NHL are play time. Here's Brenda Moore. To Lindros, trying to step in front of the shot, he scores! He was a man possessed! Eric Lindros on the last two shifts, he scores the power play goal and the Flyers lead it 1-0. Well, if you don't do it the first time, try a second time. If that doesn't work, one more opportunity. So in this power play, Lindros had three opportunities.
opportunities, three great ones, and finally makes it count. That's coming out of the corner, just stepping right in front of the net, and I believe that may have gone right through the five hole. See, Norton went down to try and block the shot. Well, Lindros faked the shot and kept right on going, and then the shot went right in between the legs. Watch it, there, there's the, the move around Norton, and into the net it goes. What a shift here. Boy, you can't stick handle or stick check Lindros. You have to take him physically. And Norton and I don't know who the other player was there. Both tried to use the stick and then Norton went down to try and block it. Neither play worked. So the Flyers, this one does count. Well, number 19 for Lindros. Brindamore and Babbage get the assists. And four, he, he had uh, five or six plays that will make the highlight reel in this game alone, and uh, he was the player of the game. Well, when you say uh, man possessed, we've seen that a lot this year, but uh, Lindros just winds it up, and you know, when he has the speed and a quick release, it gives opponents a lot of trouble, and I mean, he put on a demonstration on one-on-one -on -one hockey, or one against two players, and always seemed to come up with that puck. And, uh, Unfortunately, the goalpost and the crossbar got it uh, in the way a few times, but dazzling moves is the only way to describe the, the way he played tonight. It was just in the corner, all played it back. Petitioning clears, and there's Lindros out of the box. Lindros getting the legs moving. In on goal, a shot score! Out of the box, into the scoring column. 4 0 Philadelphia. There's a happy face. Did he rifle that? Oh, my goodness. Lindros had a spot picked out. Just overpowered Sal, but two strides, he was in full flight, and Janssen, who was very quick himself, could not catch up. You know, when you're killing a penalty, or on a power play rather, you, better, you have to be aware when the flyer Lindros is coming out of the box, and here he goes all alone, high rising shot, just got by that glove hand so quickly. Lindros shoots it. That shot is overpowering. After him, Leclerc trying to control the puck in his skates. Hands off to Lindros. Puck loose. Lindros shot. He scores! Lindros the payoff. Leclerc did some great work behind the net. It's 2 0 Philadelphia. Boy, John Leclerc is just unbelievable. His strength. And then when Eric Lindros got the puck in front, he got that thing right underneath the bar. I mean, wonderful work by Lindros, Leclerc, and Jones. Strength, that's the Flyers game, right behind the net, all three of them. Look at him just warding off checks. John Leclerc, an absolute tower. And just stays with it, stays with it. Now, look at that three, you can put a circle right around him, and then the puck will come loose, and in she goes. That must be terror playing against those three guys, or any defenseman. Now this is the kind of play that Craig Ramsey was talking about, getting the puck down low and battling the Hurricanes deep in their zone because Flyers feel they can overpower some of the Canes players. On the point, men. Brindamore moves up with it. Brindamore all the way to the circle. Desjardins, the shot score! Lynn Ross was cruising through, but I believe it's Desjardins' goal. Another power play tally, 2-0 Philadelphia. Well, Desjardins and McGillis have been very effective on the points. They get their shots through and they're starting to go in, so it's been a while since the Flyers scored two power play goals, but they have done it here in the first period. Puck movement ever so important along with player movement, and that, that pass from Brindamore was soft enough so that a yeah, one-timer was able to take place. Look at Lindros, try to deflect it. I don't know if he got a stick on that or not, but he was in the position to screen with John LeClaire here and Lindros right out in front. So a one-time slapper. Now the shot, and that changed direction. Lindros was given credit for that goal, originally credited to Desjardins. So the deflection by Lindros See how it, it dips down right past Focoon. So that was the second power play goal. Desjardins, Desjardins flung one toward the net, batted down. Jones looking for it, they chop at it. Leclerc back to the point. Desjardins, Desjardins cross ice shot. Lindros, he scores! Polzig was trying to pick up his stick. He had all kinds of problems. By the time he got a hold of it, Lindros was staring at him with the puck. 
and it's in the net. one nothing Philadelphia. Oh, boy. Well, for the Flyers, that's the 26th game that they have scored the first goal. And Desjardins just makes an outstanding pass to Lindros. You know, that's where the Flyers want Lindros' position when they have the power play over on the left side. So when, when the puck comes to him, he can just one-time it. And watch this, folks, as the puck moves around. Now, here's Lindros. There, just follow him. He's going to circle all the way over to this side. And all the traffic is going one way, and look at that. Oh boy, a thing of beauty. And when you skate away from traffic, opposition have a tendency of forgetting about you. I don't know how they can forget about you. around behind Leclerc. Moves out with it, then hands off to Lindros. Lindros left alone behind the net. Now he'll step in front and score! Doesn't take long for Lindros to get out from behind the net and get in front. And he beats Joseph, this one's tied at two. One thing that the Leafs can do, they can't allow a guy to come from behind the net all the way out in front and pick a corner. So for Eric Lindros, that's five straight games he scored a goal in and 24 for the year. That's now a little drop pass by John LeClaire. Now Lindros is going to stop behind the net. Jones does a good job taking the defenseman with him. In fact, two of them were over there and Lindros reads that play and reverses, comes right out in front, and in it goes. Joseph did not use his goal stick. Might have tried to use the goal stick to deflect that puck away from Lindros. Watch, right, watch both defensemen all over the far side. And Joseph is more content on keeping the paddle along the ice rather than apply the, the poke check. Eric playing in his 400th NHL game, gets his 24th goal of the season. There is none. Shouldn't be. Here's Leclerc the other way. Leclerc and he crossed the line. Chris crosses with Lindros. Then gives it back to Lindros for the shot. He scores! Six straight games with a goal for 88, and it's 2-0 Philadelphia. Hey, what? John Leclerc is really turning out to be quite a playmaker for the Philadelphia Flyers. That marks the eighth straight game that he has collected an assist. So not only does John LeClaire put that puck in net from close range, he also has the ability to make wonderful passes on a crisscross move. He doesn't give it the first time, but then right on the stick, Lindros was on his backhand, and boy, he gets rid of that puck on the backhand as quickly as he does on the forehand. Gets away from his check, Kravchuk can't put a stick to him, and the Flyers have two goals in this first period. Wow. Lindros, 25th of the year. Right it back to Virginia's Leclerc instead, getting it for the rookie defenseman. Now Lindros with a pass down low in front. Lindros waiting shot. He scores! Oh, Leclerc and Lindros working their magic down low. It's 3 0 Philadelphia. Good support when Turkishny went in there to pinch. And then once Lindros and Leclerc get the puck, watch out. They put on a show. They give him go, and Lindros just outweighed Kolsik when he had possession of that puck. So mark that seven straight games for Eric Lindros and moves within 26 goals for the year. Watch this now. Lindros takes the puck and a given goal. Ricky, once he went down to try and block it, he put, took himself right out of the play. And then it was just a waiting game for Lindros when he had Kolzik down. Just wait, wait. And then just flipped it over. What a play. Eric tying a career high for goals in consecutive games. Gary mentioned seventh consecutive game. Has two games to go until the record Rick Tockett scored in nine straight games. That is the Flyers franchise mark. Leclerc and Jones. From the Philadelphia Flyers, number 88, Eric Lindros. In the new Dodge intermission report, I'm Joe Micheletti along with the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, Eric Lindros. Eric, uh, pretty good pace that first period, wasn't it? Great pace. We went right to the trap. We got it in early. We went for the cycle, and uh, we've been getting some great goaltending. We're, we're a fortunate group. <laughs> you look like you're having some fun. You know, John Davidson mentioned in the open that this year you seem to, you seem to be more of a relaxed player. You're having a terrific year. Uh, is, is that the key to this uh, season for you, or is it uh, something else? Well, I heard teams playing well together, and guys are uh, really having a good time on the ice in practice. Uh, you know, wherever we are on the bus and the plane, I mean, it's uh, it's been a f fantastic year. We uh, getting great goaltending. Our team's really come uh, 
come around in the, in the last little while, and then we're starting to feel good about ourselves. You know, the, your team right now at the break has the same number of points as they did a year ago, but there's a lot of people that think that the Flyers are a better team this year than they were a year ago. Do you, uh, do you buy that, and if so, why? Well, I hope so. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, and overall, our defense has really picked up. Rogers implemented a real good system where we attack, 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 and if they're going to get to our net, they got to make great plays. And, and, and facing our goaltending, you're facing uh, you know two of the best guys in the league. So uh, we've been fortunate that way, and then we're, uh, you know, he's allowing us to go on our, uh, do our own thing offensively and, and have some fun with that. So as long as we take care of our own end, we're, we're free as birds uh, the other way. Yeah, you mentioned uh, your goaltending. John Van Beesbrook's had a terrific season up to this point along with uh, Ronnie Hextall, but Van Beesbrook came over uh, as a free agent. What's, what's he meant to the team? Oh, he's been great for us. He's uh, really settled things down. He knows... Uh, when uh, when to hold on to that puck, when to uh, you know to release it, uh, keep the flow going or slow it down. He's uh, had a lot of confidence back there. He doesn't uh, he's not real uh, vocal on the ice or, or anywhere else for that matter. But uh, he's uh, he's certainly a, a big part of our hockey team and a, and a real leader in our dressing room. We appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way. Great, thanks a lot. Eric Lindros, the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, after yeah. get away from them and Lindros scores off the feed from Leclerc. And Eric Lindros continues his point streak to 11 in a row as he makes it 4-1 Philadelphia. Well, there's a perfect example. You never know when somebody's going to come along and get the perfect opportunity. It happens so quick as Lindros will pick up a super pass. Now as a right-hand shot moving into the middle of the ice, he's got two advantages. His first advantage, he's going to be able to see the pass coming without having to look over his shoulder. Watch. It all starts with a face-off in the zone. Here comes Lindros, he turns, he's gonna look, and now he knows what he's gotta do. He's gonna head, knowing that they have possession. Look, has a right hand shot, he's facing, big. has the opportunity to let that one-timer go, he doesn't have to look over his shoulder or anything like that, and he lets that one shot go. Begins Leclerc up front with Brindamore and Lindros, Desjardins and McGillis are on the points. We'll look at the Flyers' power play ninth, there's a pass to Lindros, the one-timer, he scores! Eric Lindros rifles it past Philadelphia. That's just motion there. Montreal never recovered. They never recovered from the quick passing as the box was on the other side of the ice to the left of Hackett. The puck comes back into the middle to McGillis and McGillis makes a strong play here. Watch along the boards. Brendan Moore will work at it. Get the back, back to McGillis. Look at this. The one-timer. But the key is, is not the selfishness of McGillis to take the shot. Watch Lindros. He'll back off that far circle, get himself in position to take the one-timer, and McGillis put it right on the stick. Now we've been saying that so many times that on the power play, that's where you want Lindros lined up because at one-timing it, he is as good as anybody else in the National Hockey League, and he just over to McGillis. Weber into more. Moves in with it for Indemore. Down low, Lindros. In front, they score! He tried the pass. It went off a talent and in. Lindros, I believe, will get the goal. Power play tally. It's tied at two if it stands. Patience is a virtue here as the Flyers do not panic. They didn't try to jam the puck back into the middle. What they did is they brought the puck back out and then started all over with Brindamore McGillis at the top. By the time the puck comes down below again, that's where they'll hit the money. Right here, watch Lindros, right there. He'll try the backhander and Talis cheats. Talis is inside of his pad. Look, he's going to get right on the goal line. He looks, he's got his head up, and right from that position, he put it through the five hole. I like what the play that John LeClaire makes. Watch his feet. Just outside the crease. He's got Bork tied up. Now the pass is to Brenda Moore. Back out to Desjardins. LeClaire is in front. Across to Lindros. The shot. Score! Eric Lindros beats Abair. Power play goal. It's 3-2. to two. They didn't want to give him that shot. They were playing the man high. Desjardins wanted to go to him not once, not twice, but three times. And finally, finally, the pop of that, that triangle backed off. That was Marty McGinnis. And Lindros will just let that one shot go. It's the beauty. And right through, as everybody's right in front, Abair did not see the puck. Again, look at Lindros, cocked with that stick, ready to fire it. You got to be in a good shooting position that when it comes to you, you're ready to release it. And Lindros was, the target was there, and just let it fly. That go through the five hole? I think it did. As soon as Abair went down, the, the puck went right through the, the five hole, but Desjardins did such a great job. McGinnis, he wanted 
He did not want to allow that happen. As we see, it goes right through the five hole. McGinnis played high on it on every opportunity, but finally, watch him. He's the guy right in the middle. Finally, he just backs off enough to allow Lindros that one-timer. Number 30 in the season for Eric Lindros. He has a goal in four straight games. Eric Desjardins back up the boards. It's over to keep it in. He'll turn with it and blast. He fanned on it. Went out through Lindros. Scores! Johnny on the spot. Eric Lindros, his second of the night. It's a one-goal hockey game. I mean, Jones put everything into that shot. I didn't think the puck was going to reach the net. <laughs> you know what? That's the one that they were on for Solani in the second period is the puck's going to come back to Jones. He does a heck of a job to get back and hold it in, turn around, and let it go. But there's then nothing what? on this shot. And watch the play LeClaire makes. Lifting, lifting the, the stick, stick, the yeah. rebound, and an empty net. Oh, my goodness. That is an extremely subtle play by LeClaire here that allows this whole thing to happen. He won't, won't get an assist, I don't think, but yeah, right that's, there. That's really thinking. I'm telling you, he's... It's his own draw. They have been dominating the draws. Well, you got to be in the right spot at the right time. As Lindros picks up his 31st goal. Watch him. He's looking for it. He had his hand, his stick in the air saying, give it to me, give it to me. Well, guess what, Eric? You're going to get it. Oh, maybe not the way you thought you were going to get it, but you got it. As LeClaire, and you mentioned it, Dorian, and Jimmy did just a heads up play here. Let the puck do the work. And LeClaire, watch LeClaire, right in the last minute, holler, lifts the stick, lets the shot, hit the goalie, and then it comes right to Lindros. And it's just as LeClaire does. That good place because that's where the captain usually hangs out. Number 32 for number 88 to extend his point streak to 15 games, but... For the counter they got a two-on-one. Leclerc and Lindros. Leclerc with the puck. Leclerc for Lindros. He scores! The dynamic duo getting it done. This one's tied at one. Well, they're just going to take advantage of that high-flying puck in their own zone, and Leclerc is going to swing right across the zone. And then it's all Leclerc and Lindros. Only Stefan Cattell back for the Montreal Canadiens. And you know the key to is that nobody stopped skating. So important as we're going to look up and see Bob Clark and see his reaction. He doesn't care about, like Jimmy said, he doesn't care about that record. He cares about the win. Look at Leclerc. Got the head up. And right at the right time, he'll slide the puck over to Lindros right under Cantel. What made that play amazing is the speed of Lindros and Leclerc. John LeClaire passing the puck on the backhand, Lindros putting it in the net on the backhand. I mean, that's not the easiest thing to do. These guys are big and they're strong, but they're also very fast and skilled. And I think you saw all of that in that play. So Lindros makes it 18 consecutive games with a point, tying Bob Clark's franchise record. Four points in consecutive games, more importantly, according to Bob Clark. Here the wraparound, save for Rams on never saw it. LeClaire, second chance, didn't reach it. Held in by Desjardins, Lindros scores! Eric Lindros! It wouldn't have mattered what your name was. If you were in goal for this shot, you weren't going to stop it, baby. Yuri Slager with a great job of eliminating Eric Lindros, but Lindros got back up and went to the front of the net. And what really helped the Flyers here was that Eric Desjardins, number 37, came up on the play and created an outnumbered situation and an overload for the Flyers down low. Eric Lindros got open for about two seconds. Here's Desjardins making the play. Slager got caught in between Lindros and Desjardins. And when Eric Lindros has that much time with that release, that explosive shot, just bang, it is by you, and the Flyers have tied it. Second leading goal scorer in the league, Eric Lindros picks up. Steelers for tickets called 215 336 2000. Here's Lindros in front, beating Sean Burke, and it's 2 0 Philadelphia. Tell you what, Lindros pounced on that rebound, didn't he? <laughs> he could smell goal. Saw that just thing just sitting on the ice, nobody around it. And he just moved two steps forward and slapped it past Burke. But there's an example of one shooting the puck at the net, forcing Burke to make a save. There it is right there. Jones has his man tied up. And there's Lindros just fires it high over Burke. Burke never established a stationary position. And Lindros just capitalizes. Oh, he drives that one in the net. So goal separated.
by just 42 seconds for the Philadelphia Flyers, the 35th of the year for Lindros. He's within two of John LeClaire for NHL goal scoring leadership. And that's his first goal, Dan. All aggressiveness dumped around behind Jones there for Lindros. He scores! What a nice goal. Beautiful goal. And Jones, in talking to Eric Lindros before the game, we were talking about Jones because Jones is one of those guys on the ice that talks a lot, drives other people nuts. He said, but you know something? He's got a quick hands, quick stick. He knows where we are when he gets a puck along the boards. And boy, did he make a nice play. You'll see the puck end up down low. See, Jones, he should have almost drawn a penalty there. Instead, he's down. He's down. He's still down. And never gives up on the play. Now LeClaire and Lindros will get themselves into position with the puck going to Jones. Quick pass, bang. What Jones did was bring Brian Leach to him. And as soon as Brian Leach got to him, he knew there was open ice in front. Perfect pass to Lindros, and the big line makes it 1 0. And for the big boy, the E trains 26 years of age and has a goal already. Seems like he's been around a long time for age 26. He has since he was 18. And the spotlight has been on him and very brightly for the first six and a fraction years of his career. Not to mention Olympics in 92 as well as in 98 over in Nagato, Japan. To the bench. Salo stops the puck. He'll play it off the glass. McGillis keeps it in. Jones down low for Leclerc. Takes to Lindros. Got it in front. Shot! It's loose. They score! They score! Lindros rammed it home. And incredibly, the Flyers have tied it in three. <laughs> they may go upstairs. No. Say, but it's in the net. And at least for now, it's amazing what one goal can do, how it turns the tide. Eh? And you know what? It just all of a sudden lifted everybody, Dorney. You can just see it on the ice, how everybody had a lot more spunk after the original goal. But I'll tell you what, what a great play by Lindros originally just to get the puck in the zone. And everybody outnumbering the opponent in your own zone. Leclerc very quickly just jumps it. Then look at everybody's caught. That allows Lindros the opportunity. And then with the second opportunity, he has that big reach and just leans over and knocks in his own rebound. Well, there's no doubt that goal is going to count. Oh, absolutely. It is the, under review, however. The puck was already in the goal crease area. Right, but they are reviewing it. Mike Condon is upstairs. Puck is in the crease, never came out of the crease. If that puck had come back out, Lindros would have been in the crease. Let's see, does it come out? No, no, no it never it came out. Not even it's... close. That is a goal. Now they're going to come up here to Mike Condon, way to our left, who's the video replay judge. Fires goal, score it is a goal. Goal. Yeah. All right, It's it official, it is a goal. It, it, may have, center ice. it may have come out, but Lindros was still still out. See? But Lindros is still outside the crease. There's the puck. He kicks it and then puts it in. And then he's being pushed in and held in the crease anyhow, so a lot of reasons why they will count. Salo doesn't buy any of them. He is right now arguing with the referee LaRue, but it will stand. They point it to center ice. 37th of the year for Lindros from Leclerc and Jones. The Flyers scored three goals in a span of just two minutes and 15 seconds. You Thank you very much. Downstairs with the captain, Eric Lindros. I, it has to feel like a win, even though it's a tie. That was a tremendous comeback by your team. It was better. It was, uh, about five or six to go in the third. We really got things going, and we got the puck to the net, and we got some bounces our way, which uh, and we kept hitting the post early on. And the guys are getting a little disgruntled, but uh, stuck with it, and we'll take the point, and we'll get ready for tomorrow. Where were your emotions at final five minutes? I mean, three minutes and change to go. You're looking at a sixth loss in a row, and, and you know what, what it's going to be like heading back to Buffalo to, tonight. I mean, it, it wasn't looking good. Where did your emotions go that last well, couple minutes? guys got together. We, uh, we felt good about things on the ice. We were getting chances. We were playing well. We played well the whole third period, and, and you know, for greater parts, the first and second. We just weren't putting anything in the net, and you know, we got some pucks at the net, and we got some, like I said, some favorable bounces. Take me through your goal, your 37th on the year, cycling down low, Johnny sets you up. Yeah, well, Gilly gets the puck down here, walks a little bit and gets out in front. We get a little bit of a chance here. Well, that's Johnny's goal there, or, or Bab's that's goal. That's Babbage to start things going. That gets it at 3-1. Got us going, and then uh, Johnny makes a good play from behind the net, and I was trying to get to the front of the net and create something and finally kick through, and, uh, and it was... Uh, 
and get out of the crease and we were all set. What does a, you ask a question like this, what does a win like this mean for your club? Obviously it snaps a losing streak, but it means more than that because of the way things have gone, does it not? Well, I think we can take some pride in the fact that we uh, we played well in the in the last little bit. We, we started getting some balance. This guy started to handle the puck better. We were having some confidence with it. We weren't handling the puck all that all that well in the last few games. And I think guys, you know, when you score some goals, guys get some confidence and we uh, got to keep things going here. We got to keep things going in the Buffalo. And although we didn't win, the, it was... Uh, Better than uh, the alternative. Well, anybody who left early missed a heck of a finish. Well, <laughs> I won't comment. All right. Well, he's left. He's gone. He's left the building. The captain ties the game with just a little over um, less than a minute to go, and they get the 3 3 tie. Let's send it back upstairs. Pat, we're hanging in there with you. <laughs> a great game. 3 3. Flyers that's better, better at home. 19.5%. At home, Ice Lindros roaring up with a puck to shot. Save wild rebound. He scores! We're thinking that the whistle had blown. Cam Merrillick coming over to the penalty timekeeper, but it's a goal. Eric Lindros, boy, I'll tell you what, you got to be able to take advantage of opportunity. When you got the speed and the size of Eric Lindros, that's when it makes it a little bit easier. Now he'll make the play himself. Watch the yard and he'll just move it right into the middle. And it's a matter of Lindros taking the puck off the defenseman, kicks it up, and then takes the shot. But you know what's more important? He followed up the play. In other words, he didn't skate away. He saw the opportunity on the rebound, and he stayed with it, and he forced that puck underneath Patrick Waugh. You know, so often you talk about executing on a good pass on the power play. That time, Desjardins didn't give Lindros a good pass, but a miscue by the defenseman allowed Lindros to just take charge and ended up scoring the tying goal. But what an effort. Having won three straight and 13, two and two in their last 17. Darian Hatcher, the captain, takes a hit from Lindros, but plays the puck ahead to Madano. His pass knocked down by Recky, spun back to the neutral zone. Lindros is going to drop the gloves with Hatcher, and here they go. Lindros and Hatcher. These are two heavyweights, the opposite captains of the two clubs. Lindros clearly showing his team or sending a message to his club right here. Hatcher trying to get the right free and a right in tight by Lindros. Now Lindros trying to trip Hatcher up as they continue to wrestle. No one throwing any punches at this point. Two strong guys tying each other up. Lindros tried to go over the top with that right. Now Hatcher tries to connect. And they're both thinking defensively in this fight right here. Using trying to use their strength. Now Hatcher gets the right hand free and got a couple in on Lindros. Lindros tries to get his right hand back up on top. Oh! Down low, Lindros got a right free, and Hatcher over the top. A left by Lindros, and then Hatcher right, and then down. But Hatcher with Lindros on top of it. And that is the captain saying, guys, let's get going. There is a message, folks, right there. Now it's up to the rest of the team to respond to that message. And it's not as if he's going after the smallest guy in the opposition. No. He's going after the toughest guy. The biggest and toughest guy. Boy, I'll tell you what, what a great matchup that is. I would say that goes right up underneath the uh, classification as a heavyweight bout. Now, we're not even a minute into this hockey game, and Lindros going to decide, hey, listen, I'll take on the biggest guy, and then not only will I take him off right out at the, at the beginning of this hockey game, he wants a piece of me. Hey, well, guess what? You can have a piece of me. Actually, Hatcher had that right hand loose most of the time. Very dangerous. You'll see it hit a couple of times during this fight. Lindros came back with a couple himself, but that right hand really did some damage. But then Lindros did come back with a pretty good uppercut that caught Hatcher. But there's that right hand again. That one right hand. Well, did they fly in the judges from the Lewis Holyfield fight for that one? Oh, my goodness. How about that? with LeClaire coasting up the wing. Lindros sent one for LeClaire. And he goes to the corner with McCowan. Centering pass. Score! Lindros! One fifty-three to go in the third. The Flyers lead for the first time. Neutral zone. Was on the puck, and it was two flyers that made it happen. Right there. 
It's Lindros. It's Leclerc. And away they go. And watch the play. It's a two on three. Two on four. Watch Leclerc. Fake to the right. Back to the left. In front. Left alone was the stick only of Lindros. And he snapped it home. Leclerc with a brilliant pass. Right on the blade of Lindros for the one-timer as Lindros got away from Fedorov. And the Flyers lead for the first time. You know, the previous 12 games, you talked about the Flyers not winning. They had the lead for 17 minutes, 13 seconds only in those 12 games. Only. Here they lead for the first time. To Leclerc. Leclerc's pass. Look for McGillis, but it was a little off the mark. McGillis for Lankow. Back for Leclerc. Leclerc to Lindros. Shot. He scores! Power play goal for Lindros. And for Eric. It is point number 600 in his career. Flyers lead it three to one. Yeah, a lot of happy guys right now because the, the Flyers move the puck around and that's a, what it takes on the power play. And Curtis Joseph again is deep in his net. And uh, when the puck finally comes to Lindros, something that Lindros does very well, he releases it very quickly and a lot of times good accuracy. You know the other big thing there, Dorney, is Joseph with the puck right behind the net. Leclerc is going to really be right behind the net. So Joseph doesn't know if it's going to go left or right. So by the time he realizes oh, no, that it's going to come out to the right to Lindros, Lindros on the forehand has to be able to let the one-timer go before Joseph can come over to the pole. I don't think Joseph was ever square in that shot, no. was he? 40th of the year for Eric Lindros. Fourth time in his career that he has reached the 40-goal mark. Leclerc and Lane Cow, the helpers. At 18 minutes, we will be getting a second news conference of the day regarding uh, the condition of Eric Lindros. Dr. Larry Kaiser, who is director of thoracic surgery at the University of Pennsylvania's hospital, has examined Eric since he returned here, and he will be in charge of Eric's recovery from here on out. He will also be the one doing the talking at 645. But earlier today, as you mentioned, in Nashville, the team of doctors who cared for Eric over the last week and the captain himself met with the press. Pat Boyle was in Nashville for those proceedings and has the report on really what was a life-threatening experience a week ago for Eric Lindros. Less than a week after surviving a near fatal injury, Eric Lindros talked publicly for the first time about the scariest week of his life. You don't worry about the next game, you don't you don't worry about uh, the first round, you, you worry about uh, you know what's gonna happen in the next hour. How scary has this been for you and for him? You know what's amazing is we actually uh, start to get desensitized, I think, when you've been in uh, this line of work for a while. Um, you know, obviously with past injuries with Eric and myself, and you know, it's the scariest thing to me. I mean, the guy lost half his blood. Um, that's just something you don't encounter that much in hockey, uh, or anywhere else for that matter. But uh, it's been uh, it's been difficult. But uh, you know, I almost don't want to say this, but you know, almost normal for some reason to me. I don't know why. Hockey injuries are nothing new to the Lindros family. Brett's NHL career ended because of a concussion, and Eric's career has been interrupted several times with a variety of injuries. It's the one factor of Eric's playing career that he can't control. I have no explanation for it. I don't think there is an explanation for it. Eric's latest ordeal started at this Nashville hotel back on April 1st, where he returned after a 2-1 victory over the Predators. Lindros did not sleep at all that night, and what Eric originally thought was just another rib injury appeared to be much more serious to his roommate, Keith Jones. I didn't think much of it until I couldn't fall asleep and I couldn't really move, and I got up and I just laid in the bathtub all night. And uh, I didn't roll over and it propped me up and it uh, kept me warm. And in the middle of the night, Jonesy walked in and said, this isn't, uh, there's no way it's going to work here. Yeah, so, and they took me in the ambulance in here and Dr. Laws uh, stuck a garden hose in my chest and um, reduced the, uh, I got rid of a lot of problems for uh, for sure. That's, uh, needed that to happen and, uh, um, and we've made some progress from, uh, from then. His pain threshold is so high, he, he kept playing despite the injury. We think this probably was a small artery that was bleeding and then it rapidly filled up 
during the night and early morning hours, compressing his right lung almost completely and also shifting the contents of the right chest cavity over over to his heart, pushing the heart even to the left, which was compromising his blood pressure situation and cardiovascular status. But I think uh, most anybody else would have, would have known it right away and probably stopped, but he, he just kept going. Here at Nashville's Baptist Hospital, doctors removed the fluid from Eric's chest cavity and his lung was once again inflated. His body slowly began to restore the nearly three liters of blood that he lost. While it would take him three to four weeks for his red blood cell count to reach its normal level, Eric may opt for a blood transfusion in the